Hello and welcome to the Space Workers Live session in which I will present and demonstrate ALE solution for quarantine and remediation, Quarantine Manager. This session is one of a series on zero trust architecture topics. One of the aspects of a zero trust strategy based on micro segmentation is dealing with hosts in which a vulnerability has been detected. Once such occurrence is detected, we can apply quarantine controls to isolate the host until its remediation. Here's the agenda. I'll start by introducing this feature and the use case. I'll compare and contrast the usage of DDoS features which are built into the OmniSwitch family with those that are available on external dedicated IDS solutions. I'll proceed with the demo scenario and show you this solution in action. And then I'll close with some key takeaways. Let's get started. Alcatel Lucent's Quarantine Manager pushes the front line of security out to the edge of the network, detecting insecure devices before they can negatively affect the rest of the network. Once an anomaly, intrusion, virus, etc. has been detected, it might be necessary to quarantine or isolate the faulty or non-compliant device until the situation is resolved. The associated function to quarantine is remediation. This allows security policy violators and infected hosts to be cleaned and restored so that they can be allowed back on the production network. This recovery workflow is implemented by giving access to remediation servers for patch and antivirus updates. All or some of this process of quarantine and remediation can be automated to reduce operational costs such as calls to the help desk and IT support, for example, and to minimize user frustration. Let's illustrate the use case. The AQM receives input from an intrusion detection system, locates the culprit, and then automatically creates the quarantine policy to be applied at the point of attack entry, at the edge of the network. You may remember some years back, several video surveillance cameras were infected with MRI malware, and one day they launched a coordinated attack on global DNS servers that affected services such as Twitter, Spotify, or PayPal. In this type of scenario, depending on the type of attack or threat, it may be either detected directly by the access switch or by an external IDS. We will compare and contrast these two options next. Once the attack is detected, the IDS informs OmniVista the IP address or IP addresses of the affected devices. If the attack is detected by an OmniSwitch, it will also inform OmniVista of the IP address of the attacker. OmniVista locates the device in its database and pushes a rule to move the profile that is currently attached to a quarantine role. The quarantine role is a very restrictive role and typically it would only allow communication with a bastion host such that the device can be remediated. In this example, password change, firmware update, etc. The quarantine manager can be alerted of an attack by an Omni switch or by an external IDS. Let's compare these two options. The switch can stop denial of service attacks, which are security attacks aimed at devices that are available on a private network or the internet. Some attacks aim at system bugs or vulnerabilities, while other types of attacks involve generating large volumes of traffic so that network service is denied to legitimate network users. ICMP ping of death, land attack, art flood attack, invalid IP attacks, etc. are some examples of the types of attacks that an Omni switch can stop. This DDoS protection mechanism is based on counters and is clearly network-based and distributed. It exists on every Omni switch. It's also in line with traffic, which means it can both inspect it and stop it. But an external or dedicated IDS can in fact detect a broader and more sophisticated range of threats, including anomalies, of course, but also full-blown IDS, IPS, antivirus, data loss, etc. It can even inspect encrypted TLS tunnels. It goes well above and beyond what you can do on a switch. It looks up to layer 7 
and it is signature based. It can be network or host based. In the case of network based IDS, it is centralized as we can only afford to deploy a few of these in strategic locations such as the data center. It can also be host based, in which case it can be distributed. In the case of network based IDS, it can be in line with traffic, in which case it can block threats. That's the IPS, Intrusion Prevention System function. The point is that we're not talking about one versus the other. They complement each other. The inbuilt DDoS detection functionality is not as powerful, but the advantage is that it's on every switch port. On the other hand, a full-blown IDS is much more powerful, but can only be placed in specific parts of the network due to its cost and can only analyze traffic passing through it or mirrored to it, which is clearly not all the traffic. So there's a place for both and the alarms generated by both the internal DDoS detection functionality and the external IDS can trigger quarantine action on a misbehaving host. So bottom line is we have multiple layers of security. This is a defense in depth approach. Let's talk about the demos. Here's a scenario for the first demo, which is almost identical to what I was showing in the intro. As a client device, I'm using a Kali Linux host. Kali Linux is an operating system which is loaded with hacking tools. For this demo, I will be using the Metasploit framework and in particular, I will be launching a slow Loris attack. Slow Loris is a type of denial of service attack tool which allows one machine to take down another machine with minimal bandwidth. I picked this attack in particular because it's a kind of attack which may go undetected by some tools and is capable of flying under the radar. As we'll see in the demo, the switch will not detect this particular attack, but the external IDS will. As an IDS, I'm using a FortiGate Unified Threat Management device. The target of the attack is a Metasploitable VM. Metasploitable is a VM which is intentionally loaded with security flaws for testing purposes. So the demo goes like this. When I start the demo, let's assume the Kali Linux user is connected as a standard user and has the permissions that he or she is normally meant to have. But then the user launches the slow Loris attack with the Metasploitable VM as the target. By the way, if you don't know what a slow Loris is, well, it's an animal with big eyes and it's not exactly fast, hence its name. In the picture, it looks more like a panda, but it's not a bear. It's, it's much smaller than a bear. So the host starts the attack against the target. The IDS will detect the attack and will inform Onivista through a syslog message, which contains all the information about the attack, as well as the IP address of the attacking host. The IDS can stop the host from attacking the server if it's in line with the server, but it cannot stop the host from attacking other resources or other users that it is not in line with. So, Hence why it's important for the IDS to inform Omnivista such that Omnivista can locate and stop the attack on its tracks, isolate the host right at the point of entry, which is the network edge. And it does that by sending a syslog message. Omnivista looks in its database, extracts the MAC address from the IP address, finds the switch that the host is connected to, and pushes a rule to move the host to a quarantine row. In this row, the host has restricted access and its traffic will be redirected to a remediation host. The IDS or Unified Threat Management can detect many different types of threats, as I was saying before. It could be a virus, it could be a transfer of a sensitive file. So redirecting the user traffic to this remediation server would allow the user to download a patch, etc., and get back on the network without involving the help desk which is easier for the user and reduces the operational cost for the organization. The same can be done with an IoT device. It can be moved to a quarantine role, such that the firmware can be updated, the password can be changed, etc. So let's see this in action. 
First of all, let's review the configuration and explain a few things before launching the attack. I'm here at the access layer switch that the Kali Linux host is connected to, and this is the configuration of the quarantine manager. What this is doing is when a host is in quarantine, the traffic from that host will be redirected to this server. And in this server, there's this web page with instructions to guide the user through the remediation process. For example, downloading a patch or an update. We could also attach a policy list to the quarantine role if we wanted to allow access to some additional resources, but it's not the case in this demonstration. Next, I want to show you the format of the syslog messages, which are generated by the FortiGate IDS and sent to the quarantine manager. So I'm using Splunk as a syslog server in this demo. And here's an example of one of those messages. Syslog messages are simply text messages. And there are some interesting fields to highlight here. For example, we see that the attack is properly identified as a slow Loris DOS attack. The type of event is a UTM, Unified Threat Management. The subtype is IPS. The source IP address of the attacker is 10.0.0.1, which is the IP address of the Kali Linux host. And the action taken was dropped, which means that the attack was stopped by the IPS. We could have configured the IPS to not block the attack, but to simply uh, monitor it or detect it. Let's see how we can use this information to create a rule in Quarantine Manager to take appropriate action at the edge of the network. So let's move on to OmniVista and we're going to go to Security and Rules. There's a number of rules that come pre-configured in Quarantine Manager, but for this demo, I created my own, um, which I called IPS. So let's review it. As a trigger expression, I'm using this regular expression. So I'm matching on the fields that I show you on the message on Splunk. So the type is UTM, the subtype is IPS, the dot and the star to allow for some uh, extra fields in between, and the action equal dropped. This other regular expression is extracting the IP address of the source. The action is to quarantine, and the rule is enabled. So I'm matching on the action of dropped because I only want to quarantine the attack when the attack or the event was judged bad enough um, by the IPS that it should be dropped. So by doing that, we keep it consistent. So. Uh, the same action taken at the IPS, we're taking the same action at the access layer switch. But it's important to take it in both places because the IPS can only block traffic that flows through it. So it cannot stop the attacker from uh, launching an attack on other targets in which the traffic between the host um, and the target does not flow through the IPS. So that's why it's important to share that information between the IDS and the quarantine manager uh, such that we can block the traffic right at the access layer. All right, so with that explained, let's now move on to Kali Linux. And so this is the Kali Linux host. I now have a web browser just to show you that currently this host is not in quarantine because I have not yet launched the attack. So let's now close this. And here I have the Metasploit framework. I have configured a slow Loris attack. Uh, I have configured a target of 10, 10, 10, 1, which is the Metasploitable VM. Uh, we're using 500 sockets and let's just hit run. Okay, so the attack will start and slow Loris, as the name implies, is designed to be slow. So it may take a while for the IDS to detect this attack. So while the attack is happening, I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to resume the recording when the attack has been detected by the IDS. 
So the attack was detected after five minutes or so. Uh, we can verify that by launching a browser. And as we can see now, all the traffic is redirected to this web page where we have instructions for remediation, such as downloading a patch or an update. So let's close this and let's go and have a look at it from OmniVista. So in OmniVista, I'm going to go to band. And here we see that this MAC address, which is the MAC address of this um, IP address, which is the Kali Linux host, has been added to the band list. And the reason, well, we can have a look at it here. It is the message, it is the syslog message received from the IDS. Good. So that is our first demo. Let's now explain our second demo. This second demo is similar to the first demo, except for a few things. We won't be attacking a server in the data center. We will be performing a scene scan on a user subnet. Since this is a user subnet, the traffic will not reach the data center and it won't be seen by the IDS. But either one of the access switches can detect the attack and inform OmniVista. As in the previous example, OmniVista will look up the attacker's MAC address in its database and push a quarantine rule to the switch that the attacker is connected to such that the user can be moved to a quarantine role in which he will only get access to remediation resources. Let's see the second demo in action too. So before starting this second part of the demo, I have um, stopped the slow loris attack on the Kali Linux host and I have released the Kali Linux host MAC address from the quarantine list. But here in um, the OmniVista Quarantine Manager, and I just want to show you the rule that we're using for DOS traps coming from an Omni switch. So this rule is pre-configured. We don't need to look at uh, regular expressions because there are specific traps generated by the Omni switch. What we can do though is decide what is the action. And I've chosen to quarantine. I can equally choose to candidate or if um, a given host has been quarantined, I can also release it automatically. And it is enabled. So nothing to change here. All right, so let's now start a scene scan from the Kali Linux host. So I'm gonna go to the host. And here we are. So I'm gonna be using a different tool for this part. I'm gonna be using Nmap, and I'm just gonna be scanning um, a network and the traffic between the Kali Linux host and this network does not flow through the IDS. So the IDS will not be able to pick it up, but uh, luckily the Omni switch will. So let's do that. At some stage, we're going to receive the alert in OmniVista that a scene scan has been detected. So let's go to OmniVista and I'm gonna go to network notifications. And well, there you go. So that's the trap received uh, from the Omni switch. It gives me all the information about the attack. And it explains in particular here, what is the IP address of the attacker and the type of attack. It is a port scan. So um, if I go now to the quarantine manager part, if I click on ban, okay, we now see that the MAC address of the Kali Linux host has been banned. Now the reason is the trap received from the Omni switch. And if I go back to the Kali Linux host, if I launch the web browser, my traffic is once again redirected to the remediation host. So um, now the attack has, or the scan has stopped. So what I can do is I can go back to OmniVista I can release the quarantine mat. And then I can go back to the Kali Linux host and try to do the same thing again. And you see, this time my traffic is not redirected so I can have access to my homepage. 
Um, okay, so that's about it for the demo. The last thing I wanted to show you is the statistics collected by the switch. So I can do a show IP DOS uh, statistics. And here we see from the point of view of the switch, the number and type of attacks that have been detected by the switch. I've only been doing port scans uh, with Nmap, so that's why we only see statistics for that one. But if I had been doing uh, one of the other attacks, then I would see it here. All right. Hope you have enjoyed this presentation and that you found it useful. Let's now close with some key takeaways. Firstly, Quarantine Manager automates the quarantine of misbehaving devices and users, as well as the remediation of those devices. It empowers users to remediate their own device through a self-service portal without involving the help desk and thus improves user satisfaction and decreases operational cost. And in doing that, it helps improve device security posture compliance. Lastly, as we saw in the demo, it's vendor agnostic and we can easily define the rules for any type of security solution based on regex expressions. Keep enjoying your Space Walkers live event. I'm looking forward to interacting with you on these and other topics on the Space Walkers platform. Take care and see you soon.